Right, now we're ready to start looking at some of these practice areas that support the um, three essential activities of uh, software product lines. So these practice areas, we call them practice areas because we describe them in general terms. So the practice area of requirements engineering or the practice area of architecture definition. Beneath each of the practice areas are the specific practices that you will implement or enact in your organization. So the framework talks about the practice area in general and then your specific practices will be the ones that are tailored for that particular practice area. So however you do requirements engineering right now, for example, is your specific practice for the practice area of requirements engineering. And the tailoring required to make it applicable in a product line context will involve how do you plan to distinguish between common and variant requirements across a set of products and how do you manage those two categories of uh, requirement. The framework describes each practice area, first of all, in terms of a general introductory description, whether it's requirements engineering, building a business case, conducting a market analysis, doing component development, determining the organizational structure, and then talks about the aspects that are peculiar to product lines, both in terms of what effect this practice area has on product lines, or to be more specific, what effect core asset development or product development in a product line context has on the particular practice area. There are some example practices provided in the framework. There's also a list of the associated risks associated with this practice area. And those risks are the kind of things that we go after in our uh, product line technical probes. There are also pointers to further reading. So the technical and software engineering practice areas are the ones that basically execute the day-to-day -day operations of the product line. So component development, tool support, configuration management, and so on. And then the organizational management practice areas are the ones that cover the high ground. This is the domain of your product line manager or product line champion who's making sure that the funding keeps coming, that the organizational structure is appropriate as you scale up from the small pilot project that got you started to the larger organization that's going to be the full-blown product line organization. So here are the 29 practice areas that support the three essential activities of product line practice. So you can see we've categorized them into the skill sets of software engineering, technical management, and organizational management. And so particularly for those of you who are techies and engineers, there are nine software engineering practice areas. The rest of them deal in one form or another with the management aspects. Management at the technical level where you're doing things like measurement and tracking, configuration management, coming up with the right kind of tools to support the product line, or the higher level of management where you are coming up with a funding model, or an acquisition strategy if you're in the business of acquiring product lines rather than developing them in-house, the level of organizational planning and organizational risk management that you do, your concept of operations, and of course, a strategic approach to training the organization in all of the, well, not all of the practice areas, but at least training people in the essentials of software product lines and making sure they understand the differences between what you do now in a non-product line context with the changes that you need to institute for a product line context. So changes by way of introducing variability into the architecture and conducting an evaluation of the architecture for fitness of purpose across the set of products in the product line. So we will take a tour through a subset of these practice areas. But ultimately, as a product line organization, you will have to master 
all 29 of these practice areas, with the possible exception of the developing an acquisition strategy. If you never subcontract any of the work, then you have only 28. So the bad news is 29, but the good news is, if you look at that list, most of those you should be doing already. There are some ones like uh, understanding relevant domains, for example, that you may not think of as a practice in a single system case, but that's the important one in a product line context, particularly because it gets you started on the commonality and variability analysis for the set of products that are within the defined scope. Similarly, scoping is not something you would typically tend to think of in a single system case, although you can, in, in a limited sense, think of the scope of a product in terms of its applicability across a potential range of customers. But here we're talking about a whole set of products and the applicability of that set across different customer niches or market segments or however you divvy up the, um, the target audience for the products that you build. So. Still 29 practice areas and still 29 areas that you have to be pretty good at for success in software product lines. But as I said, bear in mind that you are probably doing a lot of this already and your job is to adapt what you do now to the needs of a product line effort. So we will take a look at some of these specific practice areas. We're first going to look at the category of software engineering practice areas. And in particular, we will look at a subset of the nine understanding relevant domains, requirements engineering, architecture definition, and component development. These are the engineering practices as opposed to the technical or organizational management practices that you would put in place. And so your people in this, working in this category are architects, component developers, testers, and so on. So they need to have not only skills in those areas, but they need to understand the implications for doing this in a uh, product line context. Here's the uh, complete list of the software engineering practice areas. And we'll see that there are some in there like the uh, mining existing assets and using externally available software that are associated with a business decision that comes in the technical management practice area about where some of the artifacts that are going to populate your core asset base and products come from. So you can get some of the reusable artifacts in your core asset base by mining some existing products that you have already or mining some existing artifacts that might have been created for uh, research purposes. And similarly, you can acquire or you can use externally available software like commercial off-the-shelf components or open source products.